Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Trident University International's Program Spotlight Sessions. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at our computer science and cybersecurity programs. Uh, Trident staff and faculty are here to serve you. We have some tips on screen now to help you maintain focus on today's subject matter. Most importantly, we're here to help, uh, most importantly, uh, we're here to answer any questions you have about these programs or others. So any questions you have, you're welcome to submit that, them at any time. And you can do that by finding the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Scroll about halfway down and find the section mark questions. We'll have answers for you after the presentation. And let me introduce today's presenter. Uh, with us is Dr. Scott Mensch, who's chair of Trident's uh, Computer Science Department in our Glenn R. Jones College of Business. He brings the best of both worlds to Trident with experience in both the academic and corporate worlds. He is a hands-on student-centric educator who holds a PhD in organizational management, as well as an MBA. He holds numerous, uh, numerous industry-relevant certifications and is an experienced conference presenter. Welcome, Dr. Mensch. The floor is yours. Thank you, Daniel. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Scott Mensch. I want to give you a little bit of a biography on my background. As you saw there, of course, I have my PhD, but way back when, just like everyone else, I had to start somewhere in undergrad. And actually, I started at the associate level whenever I was younger. And I was always into IT as a kid. I was always into techie and computer things, but we're going the whole way back in the 80s, mid 90s, early 90s. And I'll be honest with you, I was a criminology major. I really didn't know what I wanted to do whenever I went to college. Uh, and I absolutely fell into teaching. Uh, whenever I graduated, I decided to go into IT instead because I had all that vast background, but I didn't have that piece of paper. And that's why I started to work on some of those injury certs. And that's why I went back to school to get some additional education. And I got my master's and then my doctorate in IT as well. And again, how I became a teacher, completely by chance, as Daniel was just mentioning, I was a routing engineer. I was uh, doing some Mac lab work and I ended up injuring myself and while I was out they asked me to teach a few classes at a local community college and 20 years later 21 years later now here I find myself a Trident. Now you'd be very very hard pressed to walk into any organization and not find them leveraging IT to get some type of strategic advantage and again you have to have that good IT background mixed in with a blend of business as well which is what is so spectacular about this degree being housed in the College of Business. Now, with our agenda today, we're going to look at computer science and engineering program. Uh, you know, every time you turn on the TV anymore, it seems like we hear about some type of a hack, a breach, whether it was with the pipeline a few weeks ago with the gas pipeline, Target, Equifax. You hear about all these gigantic organizations all getting breached. And we're going to talk about uh, the, the job outlook, growth, and what you have to have to be able to get a degree in computer science and engineering. All right, we're gonna look at our faculty. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our faculty here we have as well. We're gonna look at the associate and the bachelor programs. And again, like I said, years back, I started out in the associate track and then I went to get my bachelor's. And then after a few years later working in the industry, I went back and got my master's and then my doctorate degree. I'm gonna to explain to you about what the environment is gonna look like if you decide to take a class with us, the course layout, the structure, and how the curriculum is delivered in those courses as well. Lastly, we'll talk about different career paths that you would be qualified for with a bachelor's degree. And then finally, at the end, we'll open up for questions at the very end. But as Daniel was saying, at any given time, feel free to put your questions down there in the chat box, and then he's going to start uh, addressing those questions at the end. All right, so again, computer science and engineering, you know, what is this degree going to do for you? As you see here, you know, you can work in multiple different sectors. You can work in the government sector, the private sector. Ironically, I've worked in a lot of different sectors. I've worked for the state, I've worked for the government, uh, I've worked for nonprofits, and I've also worked for for profit institutions as well. Because again, once you have that skill set and you have all those tools and you know how to use the different operating systems, the different network security policies, 
uh, you able to integrate that regardless of the type of industry, the type of organization. You know, whether you work for a grocery store, a manufacturing firm, or you work for a government entity, uh, CIA, FBI, whatever the case may be, you know, you're going to be using that same skill set across those different career paths. Right? Again, that concentration that we have in cybersecurity, you know, right now we have so many more jobs in cybersecurity that can't be filled because we're just not growing graduating enough students and as you see you know as I said earlier anytime you turn on the news you read uh, an article every single day you just go up in a Google search and put in security breach or, or hack and you'll see things that happened yesterday probably in your area that you may not even known about because again as long as we're relying on technology and now we are more than ever in the COVID era I'm not sure about everyone here but you know once COVID set in I really didn't leave the house I was doing all my shopping online like a lot of you, you may have had your job merged where you were working remotely and probably using a lot of technologies you're never familiar with. And we're going to start to see a, a lot more advancements in cloud computing, in telecommuting, and, and those types of positions are going to become more available, even more than they are already. And again, there it says students will explore and work with advanced technology, secure information infrastructure. You know, we do that in multiple different ways. We do it through theory. We do it through asynchronous uh, communication in our discussion boards. We do it through videos that we have for you and different links that we have for you. Uh, and also we do it with a lab environment and a hands-on environment through a test generator we have called TestOut. And they have these simulated labs that you can walk through, and they're absolutely great at giving you the hands-on knowledge that you're going to need. Uh, Dan, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right, so the different subject areas that we're going to be looking at, we'll be looking at intrusion prevention systems, intrusion detection systems, backup systems. Uh, disaster recovery plan and also very big in the COVID area business continuity plans you know no one could have planned for COVID but you're going to see more organizations having a more well-defined business continuity program if they ever have to hurry up and change their business model and how they deliver their services very quickly uh, well the we have courses also on cryptography on subnetting on networking on telecommunications on server administration that last bullet point there is so important ethical hacking as well so you know how to harden your network and you know how to be able to patch your network down uh, the risk response and recovery that kind of goes in with the, the data backups and disaster recovery planning which again is so important as anyone knows ever has lost a file you know it seems like the end of the world sometime imagine if you work for an organization and all your files were encrypted via ransomware attack and you can no longer access it which is what we saw with the, the gas pipeline a few weeks ago when it got breached that was an example of a ransomware attack uh, there's been so many different attacks and they've been evolving too over the past five eight ten years and they're becoming a, a lot more uh, difficult to detect because Sometimes they're sitting in the back end running RAM scraping, uh, taking little chunks of data at a time and not taking a whole big chunk at one time. That's why you're seeing these breaches like with Target and Equifax that went on for months and months and months and they weren't detected until it was too late. And that's going to be that part with the monitoring, with those intrusion detection and prevention systems. Uh, Daniel, can you hit the next slide, please? Sorry, it takes a few seconds. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, as I was saying before, the one core reason, I, I mean, there's so many reasons I love this program, but the one thing I really liked about it is it's housed in the College of Business. You know, business and IT more now than ever have to go hand in hand. So you kind of get the both, both of both worlds being in that business environment, but getting all this computer information system education. Um, you'll see my two. Uh, colleagues slash bosses on the screen, Dr. Lisa Mahanty, she's our dean of the college, and Dr. Jill Johnson as well. And like me, they are very, very hands-on, uh, very student-centered, and very, very education-centered as well. You know, we're, we're always revamping our program, our curriculum, making sure that everything that we have is the latest and greatest and up-to-date, because this isn't like a history program or some other type of program like merchandising that may 
stay the same in many ways over the years. You know, if you don't keep up to date every two years in IT, you become obsolete. And that's why we are always in there continually updating our curriculum and making sure that you know, we're meeting with our advisory panel and we meet with industry experts and make sure that we're delivering what industry actually wants in the workplace. All right, and our faculty. Now, I was so lucky when I came on board here. I actually worked uh, for and tried in one of their sub-organizations for the past 18 years, and I came on here as the program chair uh, earlier this year. And I've been in network administration and uh, probably for 18, 20 years now, but at the same time, I've also hold or held many different management roles uh, from provost, dean, program chair and you know when I came here I was so impressed when I got to see the faculty that I had because when I looked at their resumes they had exactly what I was looking for you know they didn't have just the educational experience they also brought that industry experience in with them as well and whenever I go in and I look at their classes and I see what they're doing that's what gets me excited and they're, they're actually bringing in real world examples that you can instantly apply to all the theory that you're learning. So I cannot say enough about our faculty. They all hold terminal degrees, PhDs in their field of study, uh, which would mean like computer information systems, IT, IS, uh, information systems. And again, they have an extremely proven track record in their discipline as well. And also they have a very student-centered approach. When I mean student-centered approach, you know, whenever you take an online class, and I did my doctorate online, Many, many, it seems like a different lifetime ago. Back in 2002, I started and I graduated in 2006. But whenever I was doing my, my doctorate degree, that's when they had two or three hurricanes all hit Florida at the same time. And you know, I went for almost a month without speaking with my mentor because he kept on getting evacuated. And that's one thing that I always stress to my new faculty is that you know you have to have a live presence in that course room. You can't go MIA for weeks or days at a time. And you know, our faculty are in the course room throughout the entire week. They're posting those discussion boards. They're giving you relevant articles, uh, announcements, helpful tips, suggestions every single day whenever you go in the course. So there's always something fresh or something new going on when you're taking a, a class here at Trident. Uh, Daniel, if you go to the next slide, please. And folks, I'm going to apologize right now if you hear a lot of noise. There's a thunderstorm right on top of me. So I'm out here in Pennsylvania, and it's, it's raining like crazy outside. So if there's a bunch of noise, I apologize up front. Now, our associate program, again, 60 credits. Uh, associate program is a great way you know, if you kind of want to get your feet wet and learn more about the program, or if you already don't have an associate degree. The nice thing about it is, if you take the associate degree, it automatically stacks onto our bachelor degree, which means all those credits would come along with you if you decide to go on for the four-year program. You can see the program core in our associate is 20 hours. Your general education and your general eds are usually your maths, Englishes, histories, uh, 32 semester hours, and then you're gonna have specific program electives that you can pick from as well. And those are gonna be eight semester hours. Now, with our Bachelor of Computer Science, again, 120 credits to complete. Uh, it's a 56-hour semester program. Your gen eds are going to be 36 hours. You're going to have additional program requirements in the core part of your IT classes, which will be eight semester hours of IT and math. Then you have concentration of 12 hours. And then you're still going to have those eight semester hours of free electives. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Now, the Associate of Science, Computer Science core courses, these are your main IT courses that you're going to be taking here. And as you can see, you're going to be taking uh, object-oriented programming, operating systems and security, network fundamentals, and the network defense. Now, those courses there that you see with the L after them, the bottom two, the network fundamentals and network defense, those are the two courses that map with our hand-on lab, the test out that you'll be using in those courses. Uh, again, they're great because after you're done with that class, you actually get to take a certification test with test out if you choose to do so. It's not part of the curriculum or not part of the course, the actual the test at the end, but if you decide that you want to get a test out cert, you can as well. As well as the one right down there at the below, the CSC 260L, Ethical Hacking. Now, that is going to prepare you for the A plus, 
the Security Plus, and the Network Plus. That's the three test out certifications that those map to. Uh, you may recall on my very first screen, I had all my credentials listed. Uh, I got A plus. I always joke. I think DOS was the operating system when I got A plus, but it was really, really Windows 95. Uh, I also have my Network Plus as well, and those were my two stepping stone certifications. Because whenever you get into IT, those are the certifications that are entry level. And then once you're in IT for X and Y years, you can start to jump up into other certification programs. But these entry level ones were giving you the foundation to be able to pass those advanced ones at a later date should you deem to take them. Uh, like the CCNA is a Cisco certification. You have the CISSP, which is required for a lot of uh, Department of Defense positions. It's a cybersecurity certification. There's an ethical hacking certification by EC Council. There's another certification called CISM as well, and those are all based on the cyber field. But again, those are the more advanced certifications. Uh, as part of that associate, again, you know, you, there's always has to be a stepping point somewhere, and that's where you're gonna be taking those stepping points with those test out uh, tools that you'll be using in each one of those courses. Now, the object-oriented programming, you'll be covering Java in that course. Uh, there are two programming languages that we focus on. Uh, it's going to be Java and Python for our programmers out there. And again, the operating system security cannot talk enough about that, the importance of that course. Uh, if you go back to my credentials, I have my uh, MCSE, MCSA, that's two Microsoft certifications that I received uh, back in 2000, 2001, uh, give or take. And again, that, that class is going to be focused on Active Directory, security policies, controls, access lists, those will be all the elements you'll be taking in that type of a course. Thank you, Dan. All right, in the ASC, the stackable program, again, the 60 credits uh, transfer from the ASC toward the BC or BSCS, which is the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, 36 credit minimum to take from the BSHLS. Now again, the 24 free electives that you see here listed, this is where we'll be getting to some of your math, taking your calculus, getting into database systems as well for any of our backend database uh, people who may have an interest in that area. Again, with our advanced programming, this is where you're gonna be taking Python and Java some more. You'll be dealing with different types of computer architectures, computer design for those uh, people who may want to go into system administration and network design. Again, we have that security piece with the info security and technology. And then at the end, you're going to take a capstone class. And a capstone class is phenomenal. This is where we take little chunks of everything you've done throughout your career here at Trident, and we encapsulate them all into that course so you have a good working model whenever you leave here. Uh, great for anybody who wants to design a portfolio so you can take on a job interview and be able to show them, here is what I'm able to do. Here are my capabilities with this degree. Now for the Bachelor of Science core courses, as you can see here, it's gonna be extended because there's more credits. You'll see there in the bottom right hand corner, again, there's gonna be a capstone in that course as well. You're gonna have foundations for computing, object-oriented programming, and a few of these, like the first one, the foundations of computing, that is also gonna be a test out class as well. Again, you're still gonna be taking your database classes, your architecture classes that you would be transferring in if you decide to do the associate first. Then you get the network fundamentals. Anybody who has an interest in network security, network administration, uh, or even potentially down the line at some point, your CCNA, um, the Cisco certification, probably half of that certification is just going to be subnetting. You have to have a basic, or I should say, a pretty well grounded knowledge of subnetting and of networking as well. And those are all the things we cover in the Network Fundamentals course. And again, as you can see, they're sprinkled throughout. There are some other classes for Java and Python as well, be it entry level or advanced in each one of those programming languages. All right, then the next slide here, uh, looking at our curriculum concentrations. 
Again, you have the cybersecurity concentration. For those who want to go into the cybersecurity field, you're going to be taking network and wireless hybrid networks, uh, locking down wireless networks, wireless systems, understanding uh, how the cryptography works in the background. Right? Also, across the board, general network security class and that cryptography class as well. Now, in the concentration, you're going to be taking 12 semester hours from any degree program, so there, it won't be any specific track involved if you do not want to take the concentration, if you just want the straight bachelor in computer uh, science degree. All right, now with our course layouts, uh, each course consists of, as you see here, four modules. Each module is delivered in two weeks. Uh, you start on a Monday, it ends on a Sunday. Uh, so for instance, if we were to start a class this week, which let's see, today's day is the 30th, and if we were to start on the 28th, it would span the 28th and the first week of July, and your last day of class would be, I should say the last day of the module would be July 4th, so spanning two separate weeks. Uh, it's really nice, especially for our working adults, military, you know, we understand that you know, you're being torn between work, family, and school, and that's why this is a great modality to be able to deliver this type of program in the structure. Uh, for a perfect example, uh, as I said earlier, you have that asynchronous discussion board communication piece. Sometime during week one, you have to start your initial discussion. You can do it as late as Sunday on week one of module one. And then in the second week, you'll have to reply back to two comments or two other people in the class. Any assignments you may have, like the SLPs and the case studies, you have two full weeks to work on those. Those are not due until that module closes. Right? And again, each module is structured the exact same way. And another great thing is that when you go into a course here at Trident, they almost look cookie cutter. And what I mean by that is it's the exact same layout, just the content's different. So it's a little bit of a learning curve the first time you take a class, but once you have module one, behind you and you're in the module two in your first class, it's just repetitious after that. The only thing you have to do is concentrate on the curriculum and on the content itself, right? And it'll become second nature when things are due, you know, when your deliverables have to be in by. And it's just nice because when you go into a course room, everything's always located in the same place. You're not hunting for things in tons of different places. All right, as I was talking about test out a little bit earlier, if anyone wants to go out after today and look at test out, you can see uh, all the deliveries and all the different tools they have in their labs. Again, that hands on element, I cannot stress how important that is. And that's what test out gives you. You know, I, I can attest the test out. I've been teaching now, like I said, for 20 years. I've been using test out for probably 15 of those years, give or take. Uh, they used to mail me when they were actually in the CD format. Now it's nice. You just log right into their portal, and you're able to click, drag, put in the command lines that you have to use. Everything is completely hands-on and integrated. Your scores are automatically brought over from the test out environment into your gradebook here at Trident. So everything really runs streamlessly in that virtual environment. And again, it's such a, a perk to be able to have that hands-on uh, to give you that real world knowledge and you can understand the theory and start applying it instantly. Okay, professional careers. As you can see there, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is where this data came from. The average growth is 3.7% across the board given any career path. Man, look at that first one. Information security analysts, I was talking about those cyber degrees earlier. 31% job growth. That is astronomical. <laughs> that is extremely, extremely high. And that's just a test to how many IT cyber professionals that we need going forward. All right. Then we have our software developers next at 22%. Now think about all the different programs, apps that have to be designed and laid out. Our database administrators that are housing everyone's information in their database, inventory, uh, customer data, customer information. And again, as you can see here, look at the names. I was talking about database in our, our curriculum earlier. There's a database administrator at 10%. Uh, the software developer, you're going to have to have a 
strong background in programming. Again, we'll be doing Java and Python to try them. The ethical hacking and some of the other security classes I had mentioned earlier would play directly into that first one, the security analysis. So you can kind of see the link of you know, 10, 22, 31% job growth and how we're taking advantage of that in our curriculum to make sure that our graduates are prepared for those types of jobs. But then again, over double, we have our computer support specialists to be able to maintain those IT systems, computer systems analysts, and then finally their network architects down at the bottom at 5%. But you can see here the top where we have six jobs are listed. I mean, well over the average growth with, as I said earlier, the uh, systems and security and analysis, just absolutely phenomenal job growth potential in that field. All right, I'm happy I didn't lose power through this presentation. I can see lightning and everything else going off. So this is a perfect time to start taking questions. And Daniel, I apologize if I have a lot of noise behind me. Uh, I am at the mercy of mother nature right now. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. We've had people who have completely lost power during present presentations. We have presenters oh, in wow. Texas who, um, lost power so it happens and if we do i'll still be here because i have my beside me i'm i always prepare for murphy's law right yeah it, it happens and uh, i guess that's what uh things like these this is what we're trying to solve in in these programs uh and before we start with the, uh, the q a we do have a few questions in already and as a reminder if you do have questions you'd like to send in uh, you can do that by finding the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Go about halfway down to the question box and type the questions in there, and we're happy to address them. We got a few in already, and just and we also have an additional panelist who is going to be joining us. Um, I want to introduce Amy Kaho Ohano Ohano. She joined Trident in 2015 and currently serves students as a and as mission supervisor. She's a respected leader who has built a successful track record helping both colleagues and students in numerous initiatives, both when the, within the admissions department and on cross-functional committees. She holds a master's and bachelor's degree from University of Hawaii. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Great. So, uh, Amy, it doesn't, doesn't look like we got the video sorted no. out, but uh, but that's, yeah, as Dr. Mensch was saying, Murphy's Law. And But first question is for you. Uh, I'm a little confused by stackable degrees. Can you explain that to me a bit more? Yes, of course. So when we talk about stackable degrees, um, we do have an associate's program, of course, as Dr. Mensch just mentioned. If you decided to start off with the associate's path, that and the courses that you've taken within the associates will be um, reviewed for direct credit into your Bachelor of Science in Computer Science program. So when we say stackable, it's just about taking the courses that you've done that align with the bachelor's program so that you don't have as many courses to complete in the bachelor's course. Great, thank you. And Dr. Mensch, the question is, for you. Uh, you. A few slides back, you were talking about test out labs. Um, are those things that also work on Macs? They do. They, it, they are Mac friendly. They work in a Mac environment. I've had many students use them on Mac computers before. Uh, and I also believe they work on Linux as well. So any open source uh, folks, they should be compatible with Linux as well. Good question. Great. Great. Thank you. And and next question, uh, this one this one is also for you, Dr. Mensch. Uh, yeah, this is such a rapidly changing field. How quickly does faculty react to these changes in updating coursework? Because one of my worries is I want to make sure I'm more learning something that's relevant for now. 
again, another good question. I kind of alluded to that a little bit earlier. You know, we're going through curriculum every single year. You know, I meet with industry experts every single year, and I just met with my faculty a couple of weeks ago, you know, talking about different programming languages. So the that side of it, that's, Daniel, that's something that never stops. That's just a rotating wheel of updating curriculum, and that's something that's done every single year, you know, seeing what needs changed, what needs updated, and again, I don't like to just rely on one person for that. That's why I like to go to industry experts because those individuals are going to tell me, yes, this is relevant in the field. This is going to be relevant in the field in the next year or two. You want to start looking at it. So we're always trying to stay one step ahead, not chasing our tail, trying to play catch up. Great, great, thank you. Uh, Amy, um, this question is for you, but I'd also like Dr. Mensch to add to it after you're finished answering. And it's one of my concerns about online learning is having limited interactions with advisors or professors. Uh, how accessible are staff and faculty to students? That is a wonderful question. Um, yes, it is something that everyone worries about in an online platform. Um, I am fortunate enough to be able to support you as a student of Trident. Um, and let you know that we do have additional resources. Our professors are reachable. Uh, they will send you an email within the class to let you know. Sometimes they give, provide you their contact information. Um, their email address is listed in your student portal as well. So you will have direct contact with your professors. Um, you also have the support of your student success advising team. And they are the subject matter experts who are able to support you in the interim while we're waiting for a professor's update. On the other end, on my end, as an advisor on the incoming new student side, we do stay with you until you get started with your class. We support you with a walk to class, make sure that you're prepared um, and know how to access your student portal, how to obtain everything, how to contact your professor. So constantly throughout your, your time with Trident, oh, you are able to have accessibility to the staff as well as your professor alike. Uh, Daniel, on the faculty side, again, I'm the person responsible for the course room management of the faculty, and my faculty always reply back with any questions within 24 hours. But like somebody like me, for instance, you know, my students have my cell phone number. I don't give them a fake number or a Google number. They actually have my cell phone number, and I joke with them. I say, I don't care if you text me at 4 in the morning. My phone's on private mode. Whenever I wake up at 8, I'll get back to you. Um, but as the chair here, again, students have my contact information. They know that I'm on the East Coast. They can call me on the East Coast from 9 a.m. up until 9 p.m. You know, my phone stays on. Um, I work Saturdays. I work Sundays. And people kind of look at me like I'm crazy, but I always joke, this is a hobby. I absolutely love what I do. And, again, you're going to find our faculty members go above and beyond be able to stay in contact with their students because they have a good understanding, especially our working adults in our military, the constraints that they're under and how important it is to give good feedback because you know I see my students a lot, especially my working adults, they're working on the weekends. Why? Because that's whenever they have time. So, you know, we're on the weekends too. We reply back on Saturdays, we reply back on Sundays because we know that as working adults, that's probably when you're getting the bulk of your coursework done. Yeah, and, and I'll say this is don't be shy because you, you may notice that we're talking in terms of North American time zones, but we know that there's a lot of people out there. They may be based in Korea or Germany or just anywhere in the world. So don't don't let that be a hindrance when trying to ask a question. If you have a question, reach out. And like you said, Dr. Mensch will, when he wakes up at eight, he'll get back to you. And Daniel, um, it's ironic you said that because in the first week of a discussion board, you do, you always have an introduction, you know, where you're from, where you're at right now. And I have so many students that tell me I'm in Kuwait, I'm in Afghanistan, like you said, I'm in Germany, I'm somewhere overseas. So, and that's just, that's typical for us in our environment. We're used to that. And as you said, always feel free to reach out. You know, that's why I give my students my real number because I'd rather them reach out and be proactive than trying to catch up later on. And, and students understand that and, and they do take advantage of those opportunities, which is great. And, and the last point on this, from the standpoint of us being there to help out, we do have we do have a webinar we run on the first day of each session. It's called first day of class. 
and it's our way to help students get prepared for that first day of class with a lot of student success tips and writing tips, uh, which is presented by both staff and faculty leaders. Uh, and then we have one more question, and I haven't read it yet, so um, not sure who it's going to. So this one is for you, Dr. Mensch. Uh, can, do you have any examples of real world projects that are tackled in lab classes? Uh, for instance, I'll just take, I'll talk about the ransomware attack the other week with the, the pipeline attack. Or in my background, I was a project manager as well, an IT project manager for three or four years. So we're always bringing those real life examples into the course room. Uh, not things that happened 20 years ago, things that happened last week or last month. Uh, for instance, whenever we start talking about subnetting and securing a network, you know, we'll give a real live scenario where we're going to give a corporation, we're going to bust it down into different functional areas, research and development, administrator, or I should say directors, employees, sales, HR, and we sit down and we'll map that whole network out and we'll talk about how we're going to configure our firewalls, how we're going to set up our control access list. I know I'm kind of talking geeky, but I'm an IT person, so I'm allowed <laughs> And we're going to set those different environments up in a real working model. And Daniel, whoever asked that question is a great one because I've said it a few times today, to be able to apply the theory to something that actually works and functions. And that's when the aha moment goes off, when you're able to see, listen, here's what I learned. Now we're going to apply it next. Yeah, a great point. And I mean, it's the exact, exactly the type of question I expect to get someone who attends Trident or is interested in attending Trident looking, you know, for that pragmatic experience. So I want to thank everyone for their questions today and their participation. If you have any other questions and they come in late, we will log those and get back to you afterwards. Don't worry, it's going to get lost in the ether. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Mensch and Amy for joining us and you know, supporting this initiative today. And hopefully they were able to help out and answer all of your questions. And look for a survey, it'll pop up at once this webinar ends. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them there. We're always looking to improve our offerings for students. Uh, and until next time, have, have a great day and thank you so much. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you.